if the phenomena that we are dealing with is continuous, then a very mysterious thing happens. So, for example, if I ask you, what is the chance that the height of a randomly selected student is 175 centimeters? What is the denominator? We don't know. And so on, I would assume what the tallest student is. Okay, maybe. let's say the, the tallest student is 176. And the shortest student is 150. And even I tell you more. Let's say there are 70 students. What is the chance that the height of a randomly selected student is 175? The denominator would be 70? No, because the number of possible heights is not 70. What, how many different heights do we have 16? between 150 centimeters and 176 centimeters. How many different heights are there? 26. No, because there is also 150.5 centimeters. Between, you know, the height of people is not jumping from 150 to 151. Also, we have 150.6, 150.61, 150.62, Infinite. Very good. So the denominator is infinite. How many of the possible heights will make us happy? One. Okay. And if I give you an apple and you divide it to infinite pieces, how much would be your share? Very, very small. <laughs> very, very. If we divide it to infinite pieces, your share of that apple would be zero. If you divide it to less than infinite, uh, then your share would be a little more than zero. But if you actually divide it to infinite pieces, then your share would be exactly zero. If you divide it into one billion pieces, your share would be one billionth of an apple. If you divide it to one trillion pieces, then your share would be one trillionth of, a, of an apple. But if we divide it to infinite pieces, then your share will be nothing. Okay? So this uh, made the mathematicians in 17th century crazy because there is a possibility that we ch choose a person and his height is 175, uh, but uh, when we calculate the probability, it, the chance is zero. And this happens for any continuous variable. So we take an apple. I ask you, what is the chance that the weight of that apple is 50 grams? What are the total possible weights of an apple? Infinite. And only 50 grams will make us happy. So the chance of an apple being 50 gram is zero. Now, even if we know that an apple is 50.00121 grams. The answer okay. doesn't change. Pardon? The yeah, the answer, still the probability of, let's say you have an apple in your hand and you know that its weight is something. It has some specific weight, right? Even if you go to 200 decimal places, like this apple has some weight, but the probability of that weight that it has, the total number of possibilities is infinite, and the weight that it has is just one of those possibilities. So basically we will lead to this sentence. There is an apple in my hand that has zero chance of happening. Are you following me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because what, no matter what you have, just imagine you take an apple. It has some specific weight. 
but the chance of that some specific weight that it has is zero because there are infinite possibilities and that what happened. This is not surprising because we don't count to find how much is the weight of that apple is. It's just, a, you know, infinite possibilities for the weight of that apple. And when that happens, the only thing that we know is that, you know, any specific weight has a chance that is either more than other weights or less than other weights. So let's say the, a class starts at um, nine o'clock. The chance that the students arrive at nine o'clock, or maybe let's say, if you say at 8.59, the ch that chance is the, the highest chance. Most people arrive at 8.59 if the class starts at nine. And we know that there are a few people who come way after that. There are a few people that come way before 8.59 and we know that this is the maximum possibility. However, what is the chance that a student comes to the class exactly at 8.59 minutes and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 seconds? What is that chance? How many different possible arrival times are there? One of infinity. Uh, we always write the denominator first. Infinity. So how many diff different possible arrival times are there? Infinite. And then only one of them, 859.0000000 seconds will make us happy. So that is zero. So let's say you started your you came to this class at some time today, maybe 11.30 or 11.29 or 11.28 or 31. You arrived at some time. But the chance that you would arrive exactly at that time is zero, even though you arrived at that time. Because the total number of possibilities is infinite. Okay? Yeah. So this made mathematicians like Newton and Leibniz crazy. And uh, they knew that things can happen, uh, and the, the things that can happen as a probability of zero. Therefore, uh, to understand that, we have to understand that if we are interested in some specific exact moment of time, it has a zero chance of happening. Notice that asking that chance is like asking what is the area of this line, this vertical line. The area of a line is a zero because the line has no widths. But if I ask you, what is the chance that a student would arrive between 858 and 859? Let's find that chance. What is the chance that a student would arrive exactly at 8.58? Uh, denominator is infinite. Yeah, and then we are interested. So that chance, that is specific chance at that moment is? Zero. Very good. Now, what is the chance that the student arrives at this time? Whatever it is. Still zero. Very good. What is the chance that the student arrives at this time? Zero. Zero. But how many different times they can arrive? Infinite. Infinite number of possible times that they can arrive. They can arrive at this time. They can arrive at this time. They can arrive at this time, at this time, at this time. So if I want to know the sum of all of the possible times that they can arrive, I have to add how many zeros? You know, infinite. how many, I have to add infinite number of zeros. And those infinite number of zero width lines will form an area that is not 
zero. It's the area. Is it mind boggling? It is. Yeah. So that is the start of the field of calculus. So basically, if we have one specific outcome, the chance is zero. But between two, every, every two intervals, then there are infinite possibilities. We have to add the chance of all of those infinite possibilities. But when we add the chance of all of those infinite possibilities, the sum of them will be not zero. It would be this, this area. So actually, if I ask you the chance of a student arriving at 8.59, you'll say the answer is zero. If I ask you what is the chance of a student arriving exactly as 8.58, you'll say the answer is zero. Zero. But if I ask you what is the chance that a student arrives less than 8.59, but more than 8.58, is the chance zero? The chance, the, how many possibilities are between 8.58 and 8.59? Should it be infinite? Yeah, there are infinite possibilities that the students will arrive between 858 and 859. So now we are talking about infinite possibilities that their chance is zero. But if any, we add them, it's basically this whole area. So it is not zero, it is something. It is the area. Okay, And a lot of times, the probability of events that we are interested in, not only they are continuous, but also they follow a shape that is like a bell, okay? mm -hmm. which is very symmetric around a center line. The center has the most probability, and as we go far from that center line, the probability will go down. Uh, a lot of times, the continuous phenomena in the world have this, um, this shape. There is a center that has the most probabilities, and as we go far from that center, the probabilities will go down. Now, answer this question. What is the chance that A will happen? It's a continuous variable. Wow. The, num the possibilities are from negative infinity to positive infinity. There are infinite possibilities. What is the chance that A will happen? Zero. Yeah, so let's say if this is A, this chance, which is this, you know, the height of this curve shows that this chance is less than the chance of the mean. Let's call it mu. Uh, the chance of A is less than the chance of mu, but it is zero. Even the chance of mu is zero. zero, okay? So the chance of any outcome is zero. What is the chance that something will happen? Zero. Okay, let's, let, let's be careful, don't rush. What is the, you know, this phenomenon we are measuring, we are not counting. Uh, this phenomenon can happen, anything between negative infinity and positive infinity can happen, right? What is the chance that something will happen? Something? What? Yeah. Okay. Let's say we are measuring, uh, let's say we are measuring weight. What is the chance that that apple has some weight? Some chance. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're very good. Yeah, exactly. It's, so if I, if I am happy if something happens, then look at this. If this happens, I am happy. If this happens, I am happy. If anything happens, if I'm interested in something happening, anything that can happen can make me happy. So all of these things can make me happy. I'm saying that as long as something happens, I'm happy. So basically, if anything happens, I will be happy. What is the chance of my happiness? One. Here you are. So you go to your wife, girlfriend, or boyfriend, and you say, my dear, what, will, what can I do that will make you happy? And that person says, if you do anything, I will be happy. So what is the chance that your partner will be happy? One. 
get 100%. Like if you do anything, she will be happy. So you do something and she will be happy. So such a person will have a happy life. So is it infinite by infinite? Yeah, it's, it's, in, it's infinite out of infinite, but all of that. So not only that, it's more precise. The total number of possibilities are infinite, but all of them will make you happy or any of them will make you happy. Therefore, the chance of your happiness is one. It's less confusing than infinite divided by infinite. It means that all of those infinite things will make you happy. So you would definitely be happy. Life is easy. Yes. If for those people who anything will make them happy, they would be happy all the time. Now, if you say that I'm not that kind of person, I'm interested, you know, I will be happy only if something between A and mu happens. Then mu will make you happy. This make you happy. This will make you happy. All of these will make you happy. So you will not be an, a happy person all the time. You will be happy if one of these things happens and you will be happy only if this happens. So although this area, this whole red area was one, maybe I write it here, the red area is one. The total area under the bell curve, this uh, normal curve, this is called normal bell curve. The whole area is one. But if you are a person who is happy between a and mu, then the chance of your happiness is not one. Is it more than one or less than one? Less, less, less than, than one. So your chance of happiness is less than one. Okay, so let's think about, the, uh, about three people. A person says, I will be happy if A happens. What is the chance of his happiness? Zero. There is a person that says, I am happy if anything happens. What is the chance of his happiness? One. Very good. So the whole area, the red area will make him happy. And then I have a person who says, I will be happy if something happens that is less than mu and it is more than A. Then the, his chance is the blue area some of those infinite zeros that are between A and mu. Good? Yes. Okay. So now, fortunately, mathematicians have gone under the normal curve. Please go to the appendix in your book. Notice that in statistics, in our field, what is important is how far you are from the mean. Do you remember Chebyshev? What matters is how far you are from the mean. So tell me, answer me very carefully. I want everybody to, you know, your, I want your brains to be absolutely fresh. Answer me. How far is mean from the mean? Zero. Zero. And notice that our unit of measurement is the standard deviations. And how far is A from the mean? Okay, we have to find out how many standard deviations is that. So we will go A minus mu divided by a standard deviation, right? In, in a statistics, our measure is how many standard deviations we are away, right? Right. That is called Z. Chebyshev called it, you know, how many standard deviations we are far from the mean. What did Chebyshev call it? You know, in Chebyshev, he wanted, if he wanted to find the probability, he said, uh, notice that Chebyshev always works. It doesn't have to be a symmetric normal curve. Chebyshev always works. He said, if we go um, some standard deviations far from the mean, the chance is this. Uh, what did he call the number of standard deviations that we are far from the mean? Okay. Okay. Very good. And from now on, if the situation is a special, 
Notice that this Chebyshev is general. Always is right. If the situation is special and the distribution of probabilities are symmetric, bell-shaped, and normal, then we call that distance, how far we are from the mean Z. And the table tells you how much is the area between zero standard deviations from the mean to some standard deviations from the mean. Do you see that first column that says Z? Uh, yeah. Okay. So just find one. That one, maybe right beside that one, write the meaning of it. It's one standard deviations far from the mean. That's the meaning of the Z. When Z is one, we are one standard deviations far from the mean. It's where are you located? This table is based on where are you located? And you cannot be on two places, right? So if you go to one standard deviations far from the mean, then it tells you how much is the area. I show you. So it says if you go to one standard deviations far from the mean, then I will tell you this area. How much is the area? It's written in front of it. Read it for me. The number in front of one. Is it 0 0.3413? Yes, very good. This area is 0 0.3413. Now in the same table, I want you to go to Z2. That means that if we go two standard deviations far from the mean, notice that one, two. If I go two standard deviations far from the mean, then this area... 0.4772? Exactly. Okay. And of course, if you go 1.2 standard deviations, if you go 1.4 standard deviations, the table gives you the area between you and the mean. So you can answer any question that has this situation, okay? Now let's practice. That was just the theory. You will see that the life is easy, okay? So let's say the product of a chips factory follow normal distribution. It means that they have this bell-shaped, symmetric, and so forth. The average weight, notice that average is the synonym for mean, it's the synonym for expected value. These are the same thing. In different questions, you will see this different wording. The average is 500 grams of chips in every bag. The amount of chips varies by a standard deviation of 10. What is the chance that a randomly selected bag of chips has exactly 505 grams. What do we know about this normal curve? We know that the average or the most, because it is symmetric, of course, the peak is at the middle. The average is 
500 grams. What else do we know? Do we know how much it is dis dispersed? Yes, we know. The standard deviation is 10 gram. Uh, that's it. This is what we know. And we are interested in <laughs> a bag of chips to be this much, 505 gram. So the question says, what is the chance of 505 gram? Please answer me. One over, oh no, one minus one over K square. Do we do it? No, it is not Chebyshev. Chebyshev, we use Chebyshev only if we don't know the shape of the distribution. Chebyshev gives us a very conservative estimation if we don't know the phenomena at all. If we only know that the mean is 500 and we know the standard deviation is 10 gram, then Chebyshev says, if you, or you open your hands to standard deviations, then the chance of something between that is 75% and so forth. But in this case, we are not allowed to use Chebyshev because we have more information, because we know that the distribution of the bags of chips is a normal distribution. Therefore, using Chebyshev is not wise. We know more than Chebyshev. And actually, I didn't ask you what is the chance that if you open your hands, what is the chance that a bag of chips is between 450 and 550? Even I didn't ask you, you know, even Chebyshev wouldn't be able to answer this question because Chebyshev must open his hand some standard deviations more than the mean and less than the mean. I'm asking you, we grab a bag of chips what is the chance that the weight of the chips in that bag of the chips is 505 grams? The chance of this is shown in this curve. What is the chance that we grab a bag of chips and in that bag of chips is exactly 505 grams of chips? Zero. But if I ask you, what is the chance that a bag of chips is less than five or five gram and more than 500 gram. Let's find that, okay? So less than 505 and more than 500. So any of these things, if they happen, will make us happy, am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, or maybe I will use the green color because your book is using the green color, wait a second. So I will use green color. So if this happens, you will be happy. If this happens, you will be happy. All of these things between 505 and 500 will make me happy. Now I need to find this area, but uh, the table in the book is based on Z, you know, because people like Chebyshev, they make these tables. So you have to find out this point, this boundary, how far is this boundary from the mean? What is the Z? How many standard deviations is this point from the mean? Zero. zero point five. Very good. No, no, this point is Sorry. the mean, Sorry. so it's zero. And how many standard deviations is this point from the mean? Point five. Point five. And if we go to the table, Notice that, do you see that graph at the top of the table? It yeah. shows that, you know, it, this table is based on the area between the mean and a point. So if we go to Z equal to 0.5, in the first column, we have the Zs. In front of it, the table tells us what is this area. This area is? 0.1915. Beautiful. So the answer to this question is that green area, 0.1915. Okay. What is the chance that X is less than or equal to 505 grams and more than or equal to 500 grams? Because now we are happy even if 505 itself happens. We are not saying less than 505. We are saying that even 
the 505 itself. So how much would be the area? 0.1 and 1.5. Exactly, because the, the specific events, their chance is zero. If you include them or exclude them in a continuous you know, question, it doesn't matter. Because I want to share my screen. There you go. Okay, so in our last class, we started the idea of normal distribution. Um, do we have a quiz next class when you look at the course outline? Yes. Yeah, about chapter six, which is this chapter. So I'm going to show you, it's only chapter six, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to show you all possible versions of the questions about normal distribution that you may face. So the only thing that you need to have in front of you is the normal distribution page. One by one, I write the questions and then I want you to see all possible combinations that may happen. Okay. So for all of our scenarios, Let's say we are dealing with a process, uh, let's say a drug company that uh, is producing something with a mean of two milliliters, uh, sorry, mean of 10 milliliters. So we have a normal distribution and the mean of that normal distribution is 10. The standard deviation is two. Okay, and let's say the, this is the mean amount of liquid that is put to a container, okay? Now I'm not going to repeat this, just remember that for all of these questions, this is the scenario. And now we are randomly choosing a product. The easiest question that can happen is that in the quality control department, what is the chance that we select a product with this kind of variation? What is the chance that uh, the container has uh, uh, some amount of liquid between uh, four and, uh, sorry, between 14 and 10 milliliters? Okay. Now I want to make these uh, the steps very clear for you. The first step for any question after you read the description is that you identify and annotate the distribution, which I just did for you. Notice that to identify the uh, the distribution, we have to tell what is the shape of the distribution, what is distributed, like in this case it's liquid, it can be the number of faulty products, it can be the amount of, um, you know, weight of a, um, chips in a bag of chips, how much is the mean and how much is the standard division. Step two is that we identify the point or points of interest. Interest, okay. So in this question, what are the points of interest? One point of interest is 10. The other point of interest is 14. And 14 is on the right side of 10 because X axis has a direction, this direction. So 14, must be here. Then step three is we will identify the areas of interest, okay? So the area of interest, we are interested in the chance of something between 10 and 14. And as we discussed in the previous class, is that the chance of 10 is zero, the chance of every single item between 10 and 14 is zero, but some of all of those infinite possibilities between 10 and 14 form this area. So this is the area of interest, okay? 
and then we have to find the areas And next step is that we have to find the areas in the table. Okay. So now, uh, please go to the table. Does the table give us the area between 14 and 10? Look at that chart, uh, the graph at the top of page AP55. Does the table give us the area between 10 and 14? Normal distribution table. No. No, it doesn't. It gives us the area between zero and a point. And everything is measured in terms of number of standard deviations. So let's practice that first, just your mind to warm up your minds. Uh, how yes, far sir. is 12 from 10? Uh, 12 from 10 is uh, 1, sir. 1 standard division. Very good. Thank you. Uh, how far is 14 from 10? 2. Very good. Thank you very much. How far is 8 from 10? 1. Mm. Negative. Negative one, very good. Okay, so <clears throat> we know that our unit of measurement is always the number of standard deviations that a point is apart. And this table is based on that Z. So we know that the Z for the midpoint itself is Z equal to zero. The Z for 14 was Two. Two. So please go to the table and tell me what is the area, this green area in the table between Z equal to two and the center point. Just in column Z, find number two. 0 0.4772. So the same scenario, I do the first step for you. Here, we have always the same thing. So mean is 10, standard deviation is two. What is the chance that X is between 10 and seven? The first step was annotation. Let me complete my annotation, normal, liquid, okay. Annotation is done. What is the second step? Uh, find the points of interest. Okay. Identify the points of interest. So one is 10, the other one is? Seven. Very seven. This liquid. is the direction of X axis. Very seven. Left side of the mean. Yeah, here you are. So this is seven. We identified the point of interest. Step three. Identify areas of the interest. Very good. So the area of interest would be between seven and 10, right? This is the area between seven and 10. And so we identified that. And then what is the next step? Find the area in the table. Okay. But to find the area in the table, the table is organized based on statistical distances, based on Z. So how far is 10 from 10? Zero. Zero. How far is seven from 10? Uh, negative 1.5. Very good. You have to use drop lines to show that this Z belongs to this specific point. And this Z belongs to this specific point. Also, we use big bullets to identify the area. So 
uh, when I want to answer the question, we are interested in this area. So this is the way, again, another line, drop line, that shows that we are interested not in a point, but into this area. So this area between mean, uh, please look at the Z column and tell me, do we have Z equal to negative 1.5? No. So basically this table is incapable of giving us this area. It only works on the areas on the right side, right? So how can we find this area on the left side? Wouldn't it just be the same as positive 1.5 since it's symmetric? Why? What is your argument that it is the same? You are saying the area between mean and negative 1.5 and the area between mean and positive 1.5 is the same. What is your argument? Because the, the curve is symmetric? Yes, because the curve is symmetric and beautiful, you know, the area between the center point and one and a half standard deviation on this side would be the area between the midpoint and one and a half standard deviation on the other side because it is symmetric. What would be the reason that one side would be different than the other side? So we don't need to search for one point, negative 1.5. We search just for 1.5. So what is the area between mean and 1.5 standard deviations? 0 0.4332. And that is our answer. Good. So now let's make the question a little harder. The story is still the same. We are producing these liquid containers. The mean is 10, the standard deviation is two. Uh, it follows a normal distribution. It's about a liquid. And I ask you, what is the chance that something between Twelve point five and seven point five to happen. What is the first step? Annotate. Have I done that? Yeah. What is the second step? Identify points of interest. Very good. What are the points of interest? One is like this is the direction of x axis. So on this side, we will have 11, 12, and so forth. So 12.5 is here. And less than 10, we have 7.5. Right? So these are the points of interest. We did it. Next step. Identify the areas of interest. Very good. What are the areas of interest? Notice that our table only gives us the areas between mean and a point in that table. So we are interested in this area. And also we are interested in this area. We are interested in these two areas. Yeah, we identified that, okay. What is the next step? Find the areas in the table. Okay, can we directly go to the table? Yeah. No, we can't because the table is organized based on statistical distances. So we have to convert everything, every of these points to Z, otherwise the table is useless. 
How far is 10 from 10? Zero. How far is 12.5 from 10? 1.25. Yeah. yeah, so for those who don't want to do it in their head, 12.5, how far it is from 10? 12.5 minus 10. This is for laymen, people in the street, but we are magicians and witches. So for us, the distances are in terms of standard deviations. So it would be 1.25 standard deviations. Uh, Z for 7.5 is 7.5 minus 10 for the layman. We are not layman. We have to convert everything into the term of how many standard deviations they are. And it would be? Minus 1.25. 1 1.25. 1 okay. So now, uh, do we have 1.2 in the Z table? Yeah. But we are not interested in 1.2. We are interested in 1.25. So in that row, you go forward, second, third column, fourth column. I guess it's the sixth column that its header is 0 0.05, right? Yes. So that means 1.25. Read the area for me. The area between, notice that for areas, we use big bullets that point to a big area. So... That area is 0 0.3944. 3944. Very good. Now, between mean and negative 1.5, how much is the area? 1.25? The same, because the curve is symmetric. Same. Therefore, the final answer is 0. 3944 plus 0 0.3944 and the final answer for what will make us happy between 7.5 and 12.5 is 0 0.7888 right. final answer a little more difficult. Uh, still the scenario is the same. Mean is 10, standard deviation is two. Mean is 10, standard deviation is two, direction of X axis. Uh, and I ask you, what is the chance that something happens between uh, less than 15 and more than 12. What is the first step? Annotate. Okay. So I say this is a normal distribution. It's the distribution of the liquid. Uh, okay. Done. What is the step two? Identify points of yeah, identify points of interest. One is 12. This is 12. And the other one is 15. These are the points of interest. Okay. Notice that both of them are bigger than 10. 10 is also a point of interest. Okay. Uh, next step. Identify the areas of interest. The yeah, area of interest, okay. The area of interest would be this area, right? We are interested in between 12 and 15. This is the area of interest. Okay. What is the next step? Find the areas on the table. In the table. Can we directly go to the table and search for 15? No. No. 
because the table is organized based on statistical distances. So this is z equal to zero. This is z equal to 12 minus 10 divided by two is one. And what is the z for 15? 2.5. 2.5, okay. So now, can we find this area in the table? So how do we find this? Um, um, purple area. To which row we go? Z equals 1.5? No. This table only tells us the area between a point and the center. This table gotcha. is incapable of giving us the area between two points. Can I ask a question? Uh, can we can we um, find the area of the z is equal to two point five, and then find the area of um, twelve, which is one, and then subtract them from each other? Exactly. Exactly. This is what we are going to do. We are going to find the area between. 2.5 standard deviations and the mean because the table is capable of, of giving us this blue area. And then we will find the area between 12 and the mean, this green area. And then when we subtract these two, the purple area will be identified. So first, tell me what is the area between mean and one standard deviations from the mean? This green area. Point three four one three. Point three four one three. Very good. And now for the blue area, notice that I use big bullets to refer to the area of interest. The area between mean and two point five standard deviation. How much is that area? Point four nine three eight. Point four nine three eight. So to find the answer to this question, I have to subtract, you know, this green area from the blue area. The blue area is zero point four nine three eight minus. Now, what is the green area? Zero point three four one three. Therefore, the, the answer to the question is? 0 0.1525. Okay, so we, how many areas of interest we had? Three. Very good, pay attention that this question was a special, three areas of interest, just to, to find, we actually, there was one area that we were really interested in, but to find that area, we had to find two other areas as well. And then we found areas in the table. Normal table, normal curve is beautiful. Mean is 10, standard deviation is two. What is the chance of something between 8.5 and 5.8. What is the first step? So I identify and annotate distribution. Okay. So we identified the mean, we identified the standard deviation, the shape of the distribution is normal. It is distribution of what? This question is about distribution of? Liquid. 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 Very good. Okay, so I identified the distribution. Okay, what is the next step? Step two. And then we have to identify a point of interest. Very good. Where is, uh, this is the direction of x-axis. So 11, 12 are on that side. So 8.5 would be here. 
and 5.8 would be here. You identify the points of interest. What is the next step? And then identify areas of interest. Okay, the area is between these two points. So we are interested in this area between 5.8 and 8.5. Can we find this area in the table? We cannot find this um, area in the table. So instead of that, we will find this area first. And then we will find this area. And when we subtract the two areas, then we will find the area of interest. So I think we identified the areas of interest. What is the next step? Then find the, find the area in the table. Very good. Can we directly go to the table and find these areas? Not directly. No. So. We need to convert everything to uh, statistical distances. How far is 10 from the mean? Zero. Zero. Very good. How far is 8.5 from the mean? 0.75. Do you need to write negative if it's the same? Yes, this Z is negative. Okay. And then Z um, on the left side for 5.8 is 5.8 minus 10 divided by 2. The Z for this point is? Negative 2.1. Now we can find the areas. For the blue area, the big blue area, how much is this area? 0 0.4821. Do we have 2.1? Oh, we are, oh, that's good. So it's easy. 0 0.4821. 4821. For the green area, this area, Zero point zero we have point 0.7, but then we have to go six columns ahead. For this one, we have to go to point 0.7. We have point 0.7 in the table, then we have to go to 0.75. Three, four. Very good. Okay. So now we can approach the question. The blue area was 0 0.4821 and the green area was 0.2734. Therefore, the answer is 0 0.2087. Done. Now, let's make it a little harder. We have the mean is 10, standard deviation is two. And uh, ask you what is the chance that something more than 13.21. We can also write it as X more than 13.21. They're the same thing. So what should I do first? Annotate. Okay. Step one, this is a normal distribution. This is distribution of what? What is normally distributed? Liquid. Yeah, the amount of liquid in a container, okay. 
on average there is 10 and it varies with the standard deviation of two done what is the second step identify point of interest and what is that 13.21 What is the next step? Identify the areas of interest. Very good. So we identify the area of interest. We want more than 3.20. This is the area of interest. Uh, can we find that area in the table? No? no. The table only gives us the areas between the point and the midpoint, the mean, mode, median, because it's symmetric, they are the same. So these are the, this is what we want, but this is what we can, the green part is what we can find in the table. Okay, so identified the areas of interest. What is the next step? Find the areas in the table. Very good. Can we directly go to the table and find these areas? The table is organized based on statistical distances. How far is 10 from the mean? Zero. How far is 13.21 from? Okay, this is now a little more complex. Let's write it down. So this would be 3.21 divided by 2. 1.605. 1. 1.0. Or it was 1.605. 605. So we cannot find the purple area from the table, but we can find the green area in the table. So can you please tell me in the table, what is the area between mean and 1.605 standard deviations. Z equal to 1.6, very good, we have it. And we have 1.65, but we don't have 1.605. No, so what are the Zs that we have in the table that are close to Z equal to 1.605. We don't have this in the table. So what do we have close to that? 1.61. Very good. Uh, 1.61. And uh, how much is the area between mean and 1.61? 1. 0.4463. Nice. But we are not interested in that. We are interested in 1.06. Uh, the other point that is close to 1.605 is 1.60. 1.60 is also a little bit less than this. Uh, the area for that is 0.4. 4.52. Like this? Yes. Okay. So are we interested in 1.61? Z equal to 1.61? No. Are we interested in Z equal to 1.6? No. So this 1.605 is closer to which one of these two? Just uh, in, in between. So we have to add them and divide by two. Exactly. You have to find the average of these two. <laughs> So that area is for Z that is right between these two would be the average of these two. Tell me the answer, please. 0.44575. Nice. So 
Now we found that green area. How can we find the purple area? I want you to answer this question. Uh, I ask you this, what is the chance that something between negative infinity and positive infinity will happen? Now, what is the chance of this is negative infinity? This is positive infinity. This chance. What is the infinity. chance that something between negative infinity and positive infinity will happen? Basically, yeah. I'm asking you, what is the chance that something will happen? Uh. You know, you will be happy if anything between negative infinity and positive infinity happen. So let's say if four happens, are you happy? Yes. You are happy if something between negative infinity to positive infinity will happen. If six happens, are you happy? Yeah. Minus three happens, are you happy? Minus 2,932 happens. Are you happy? Yeah. yeah. So what is the chance of your happiness? And be happy. One yeah. So whatever 100. happens, you will be happy. So this chance is? 100. One. one. Yeah. One, if you want to convert it to percentage, it would be 100%. But uh, from the probability point of view, it's a number between zero and one. And we are... You know, for us, the chance is one. It will, we will definitely be happy, whatever happens. So the area below the normal curve from negative infinity to positive infinity is? One. Everybody, please answer me. The area under the normal curve is? One. 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 I'm waiting. One. 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 Very good. So if that area is one, then how much is this area? One minus point four four seven. I'm just asking you this. Do you see this blue area? Zero from, point five. From the midpoint to negative infinity. How much is this area? Minus one. Zero. Point five. No, the area yeah, point five. area Zero cannot point be five. negative. Point five. Point five. Why point five? Symmetry. Okay. It's half of the curve. So yes, half. yes, very good. It's half. half of the curve. So if I we if we uh, understand that the area under the from negative infinity to positive infinity is one, and this curve is symmetric around the midpoint, then from the midpoint to each side would be point five. From the midpoint to negative infinity is point five. From the midpoint to the positive infinity is also 0.5, okay? So this uh, half of the normal curve is always 0.5, okay? So therefore, from this point to positive infinity, this area is 0.5. So how much is that purple area? 0 0.5 minus the... Exactly. Uh, 0 0.4, yes. 5.5. Yes, yes. So this area from the center point to infinity is 0 0.5 minus this green area, which we found in the table, 4, 4, Five seven five. That gives us the purple area, which is zero point zero five four two five. Next question. We have this normal distribution. Mean is ten. Mean is 10, standard deviation is 2. Now, I ask you this question. What is the chance that something less than mm -hmm. 
What should I do? Annotate. Okay, this is normal distribution. And this is the distribution of some liquid. What is the next step? Identify the points of interest. Okay, uh, point of interest is four point, because this is the direction of positive. So 11, 12 one on that side, 4.513 would be on the left side. What is the next step? Identify the areas of interest. this area, right? Can we find that area in the table? No. No. But we can find this area, this area between a point and the center. We can find this area, right? Okay. So we identified the area of interest. What is the next step? Find the areas in the table. Okay. Can I directly go to the table and find 4.513? No. Why not? Okay. Let me give you the answer. The reason that we cannot directly go to the table is that that table is not organized based on milliliter of liquid. That table is organized based on the distance in terms of number of standard deviations. That's why we cannot go to the table. So we have to convert everything to statistical distances. How far is 10 from 10? Zero. How far is 4.513 from 10? Negative 2.4, The green area is symmetric. So if we find Z equal to 2.435, 2.7435, we can find the green area. Okay. So do we have the green area in the table? Uh, Z equal to 2.7435. Do, do we have it? No. No. We don't? Okay, what no. do we have? We have, do we have 2.74? Yeah. Yes, and okay, 0. 0.5. Z equal to 2.74. We have Z equal to 2.75. Um, is this right between those two? No. If it was, if this was negative 2.745, it would be right between 74 and 75, but it is not. So it is not right between those two. When this happens, then we will choose the closest number. So which one of these two is closer to 2.7435? 2.74. Very good. And what is that area? 0.4969. So we don't look at that one because it is closer. It's not right between those two. The green area is point Four nine six. Okay, so now can we find the target area? The yeah. 
Uh, how can we find that? 0.5 minus 0.49. Yeah, we know that. We know that this area to negative infinity is 0.5. If we subtract the green area, which is 4969, then we find the answer. 0.0031. So we have a distribution, a normal distribution, the mean is 10, standard deviation is two. What is the chance that X is, let me change that, X is less than 17. What is the step one? Annotate. Very good. This is normal. This is liquid. Notice that there are four items. If you miss them, you will lose mark. Okay, done. The step two? Identify the points of interest. What is the point of interest? Seventeen. Yes. This is X axis seventeen would be on this side. What is the next step? Identifying the areas of interest. Okay. Area of interest. You can say that I am interested in anything that is less than seventeen. But our table is not organized like that. So we divide that area less than 17 to these two areas. This area and uh, let's say this, this area. The combination of these two is the chance of anything that can happen that is less than 17 up to negative infinity. Next step. Find the areas in the table. Can I directly go to the table and find number 17 in the table? No. Why not? It only goes up to three? No, the reason is oh, not. 0.5. No, that is not the reason. So even if this point was three, I wouldn't be able to go to the table. It isn't based yeah. off the difference? Because the table is based on Z, not based on real numbers, not based on amount of liquid or the weight of chips in a box or the opinion of people. That table is organized based on Z the number of standard deviations that each point is far from the mean. So what is the Z for this point? Zero. What is the Z for this point? 3.5. Okay, now we can go to the table, find Z equal to 3.5. And tell me how much is this area, the green area? 4989. Do we have 3.5? Uh, yeah. No, we have 3.0, we have 3.01, mm -hmm. we have 3.05. The biggest number that we have in the table is Z equal to? 3.09. The area is how much? For Z equal to 3.09? 0 0.4990. 0 0.4990. This is the maximum distance that this table can answer us. So as we go far from the mean, the chance is increasing. I show you here. 
like the chance between mean and one standard deviation was three, what was that? Three, four, one, three. The chance between mean and two standard deviations, this whole chance was 0 0.4772. The chance between mean and three standard deviations, this area was 0 0.4987, okay? So this is one standard deviations, two standard deviations. So as you see, it goes from 3.4 three, to 3.0.34 three, uh, to 0 0.47 to 0 0.49. The chance is increasing. What is the chance of something between mean and 3.09 standard deviations to happen. 0 0.990. Yeah. No, 0 so 0.4990. See, yes, yes. So as we, as we go far from the mean, this area is growing. Um, can this area become more than 0 0.5? No. Why? Because what, the whole domain is one and the other half is 0.5, so this half cannot be bigger than 0.5? Exactly, very good, very good. Yeah, this area cannot be more than 0.5, and it is growing, and when we reach to 3.09 standard deviations, it becomes 4.99. Now, I want you to guess, if we go to 3.1, how much it would be? It would be 0.499. 999. If I go to 3.4, then it would be 0 0.49999. And now that we are interested in z equal to 3.5, like the area may be 0 0.49999. It cannot be 0.5, right? 0.5 would be the area between mean and infinity. So the area, although 3.5 is not in the table, but we can agree that this area from midpoint to 3.5 is very close to what? This area goes from 0.47 to 0.49 to 0.499. When it reaches to 3.5, this area is very close to point. Five. Five? And say, Five. Yeah, we can simply say that this area, once it is beyond the table, this area is close to 0. 0.5, okay? A little less than 0. 0.5. And how much is this blue area? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. So the chance of less than 17 is this blue area, which is 0 0.5, plus that green area, which is that is also close to 0 0.5, approximately. So the answer is one. So basically the chance that something less than 17 may happen is very close to certain, very close to one. Good? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, can you please tell me how much is the chance of something more than 17? What is the chance that X more than 17 may happen? Close to zero. So yeah, it's close yeah, to zero. Exactly. Yeah, close because to this zero. area is close to 0. 0.5. Therefore, this area is close to zero. 